Hola mis amigos, como están? Welcome to a special Classico Nacional edition, um, Classico Nacional video, should I say, um, here on my channel. Um, first of all, sorry for not uploading for a while. Um, been ill for, I don't know, best part of a week almost. Well, well, I'll say about four days or so. <clears throat> um, it's kind of gone now, but it's kind of still in my tubes and whatnot. Um, it wasn't COVID, thank God. Uh, I did get tested, it was negative, so that's pretty sweet. Um, so yeah, let's get straight into it. Obviously, uh, Classico Nacional has just taken place. Well, about I think it finished about five or so hours ago now. Um, and yeah, Classico Sin Colores. Um, obviously, Classico Without Colors. Um, an initiative, I think, undertaken by both Chivas and America in regards to the events in Coretero last weekend. Um, <clears throat> and um, excuse me, I'm going to be coughing a lot, so, so, um, so you know, it's just an initiative where, you know, you don't see your colours, you know, obviously people's jerseys were a thing that made them a target in that um, atrocity, I guess we can call it, um, last weekend. So the idea is to not show your colours, to not have colours, not have your colours and their colours, but um, kind of make everything a bit more neutral. Um, so um, that was a, that's a good thing, obviously. That's, I'm really okay with that. Uh, obviously, you got this shirt, which is the cleanest um, white chivas jersey I have. I do have the other one with the red and what blue, but um, it's a little bit too much colour. So... Um, yeah, so the events of last weekend was always going to affect this game, I think. It was going to make it um, a little bit weird feeling, give it a weird vibe, um, obviously, because um, the Classico Nacional is normally like a, a really fiery, um, heated game. You know, there's two biggest rivals, it's the biggest game in Mexico. I don't care what anyone says about the Regio or Jovan or whatever. It's the biggest game in Mexico. It probably will be for a long more, a lot more time. So, um, it's normally heated. It's normally, you know, as rivalries are, um, there's fouls and there's drama. Um, so it's kind of, it must have been a kind of a weird thing where you want to promote that, but you also want to make sure that there's no violence. There's no, um, um, bad things that happen in the stands, that everyone's quite chill. So um, it was always going to be a weird game, I think. Um, <clears throat> and that was evident right from the beginning of the game. You could tell the players weren't going to um, jump into stupid tackles. Uh, they weren't going to start any fights or anything. They must have been told, both teams, like, hey, don't don't cause any ruckuses. We need this to be as non-violent as possible. We need, we need to make a statement that what happened last weekend is an anomaly and it's not the norm. Um, and I think in that respect, this game was quite successful, I think. Um, both teams seemed unified in, or say clubs, should I say, um, both clubs seemed unified in their message of, you know, peace and everyone's welcome at a football game no one should feel danger when they go to a football game um <clears throat> so yeah in that in that respect i think it was quite a decent game to be honest with you um you know there was john de santos that decided to get to come to yellows and get sent off um i think it was obviously standard red but um you see how gutted he was as well so you know it shows you how much this game means to the players let alone the fans um, so yeah, it was, it was a good message. The whole week was just, you know, Classico and Colors, you know, without colors, everything, they were all black, black and white, they were all their photos, same as Club America, <coughs> excuse me. Um, so it was good, you know, in that respect, I think it was a really successful game. Um, everyone in the Aquan seemed like they were having a good time. Uh, all the barrio section I saw in the commentary, um, was taken up by kids from the foundation or some charities that both clubs are affiliated with. So that's pretty sick. Um, that's pretty awesome, to be honest. They were wearing white t-shirts, so it's all good. Um, the actual game itself we should get into, because obviously that's why you're here. Um, well, new nil, um, a new nil, and it was... Um, well, some people say it's boring. I think, I mean... Uh, Yes, yeah, there, it was boring, most of it, but um, quite alarming, 
Now let's talk about America first, because obviously the UA team, um, very quickly, um, they're arguably having their worst season in decades, I think, or at least in a decade. Um, last time I checked, they were bottom of the league. Um, they've been getting smacked about everywhere this season. So this was not a really good opportunity for Chivas to beat them. Um, but you could tell America were like absolutely terrified of losing this game. They they were blatantly playing like a team that had been smacked last weekend and were like, we're not going to lose this game. We can draw it. We might nick a win, but we're definitely, definitely not going to lose this game. And they played like it. So defensive. I tweeted out, like, this is the most defensive I've ever seen Club America in a, in a Classico National. Um <clears throat> I've been watching these games now. I've been watching these class games for near, nearly eight years or so. So, you know, in, that shows you the depth. Like, at least in the last ten years, this America team is the worst. Um, and it's not me just taking a nitpick at my rival. It's, it's true. Like, they're a, they're a pretty ter- a terrible team right now. And a lot of emphasis on Solari. But I think the players have to sh- shoulder some of the responsibility. Um... So there was a load of optimism with the Chivas fans, including myself. I put it in a three-one win. Um, yeah, I mean, let's. I mean, that's America. America's worst team, at most the worst American side for a while. Um, absolutely negative defensive football. They absolutely blatantly didn't want to lose this game, and. Um, they played like it as well, uh, very defensive. So you go to Chivas, who have been up and down. We've had some good results, scored some really good goals, and we've had some bad results, um, particularly the one against Puebla uh, last week. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, I was confident. Like, Vega, um, the starting lineup I thought was all right. Vega, um, attacking-wise, anyway. Vega, Alvarado, Angulo, who have all been playing well. Alvarado hasn't scored yet, if I'm not mistaken. So, um, there's question marks over him still. Like, should we have got? Should we have just kept Antuna? I think Alvarado is basically an upgrade on Antuna. Antuna is quick, but he's got no end product. Whereas Alvarado seems to have a little bit more. Seems to have got a really good assist with Macias last week. So, um, yeah. So. The, the the attacking lineup I liked the defensive lineup I think defensively is where we're really weak at the moment. Playing Jimenez in goal apparently there's a rumor that Coutinho is not um, renewing his contract and he's being basically not played until he signs a new contract, which I don't agree with. To be honest with you, um, I don't I don't understand that. Like you hold the player hostage basically. Oh. Um, we're not going to play you until you renew. And I think that's a bit shitty, to be honest with you. No no, uh, no offence to anyone that doesn't like swearing, but it, it is. Like, Godino's a really good player, and he's been playing really well. And I'd be one of our best players over the last year or so, so I don't think we should be not playing him. Give me a second, I'll see you get a drink. <clears throat> um, but Jimenez has done all right. To be honest with you, um, he's I've got a real problem with his distribution. He can't seem to kick a ball to save his life, but he's really good, like reflex wise. He, he he made like three or four really good saves this game that kept Chivas in the game. So his savings, he's been away, and you can tell by the Chivas main account admin that they're really trying to pump him up, um, and make him out to be one of the best performers of the game, which I think he was in this in a sense, but <clears throat> all the messages from the club seems to be all the subliminal messages anyway is him as in Cadino out. So But defensively I mean Mir was a bit suspect. He did score a goal that was ruled out offside, which I think was correct, but it was close. Um but very dodgy. He had a very dodgy game. I think he got booked as well. Brisenio got booked about five minutes after he got onto the pitch. Um, we need upgrading the defence. Um, Vega, having talked about the attack, Vega had a bit of a, I would say, poor game. He still 
had a really, really good Galazzo cannon off the post, which if that had gone in, mate. Um, <clears throat> so you say, yeah, Vega had a poor game, but he still did really good things in the game, and you can tell that he had a poor game because his bar is so high. He's normally one of our best players every game, so for him to have a poor game shows you just how bad Chivas were in this game. Um, just couldn't break down the bus, basically. They, America just put a bus in their goal and say, like, hey, you're not going to get a goal in. And Chivas do sometimes suffer with um, not being able to create attacking play. No, every once in a while they do. Every most of Chivas' goals in the last year has just become, just come from long range bangers. Like Angulo's done a bunch, Vegas done a bunch, um, Macias I think this, his one was a long range as well. We don't seem to just pass the ball into the net. We haven't been able to do that for years. So, um, hey, Vega did have a poor game, but you know his standards quite high. It's so high that. Shows you just how bad the rest of the team was. Messias came on, didn't really do anything. Um, I was really expecting him to kind of take the game, and I, I thought he was going to score. To be honest with you, I thought Vega was going to score. I thought Messias was going to score. I thought Alvarado was going to score, or Angulo. To be honest, um, <clears throat> so for Chivas not to score is a bit poor. Um, I think the best player on the pitch was um, Broke. For me. I say it's Bouquet, but I think it's Bouquets, Bouquets for you guys. Um, I call it Bouquet because it's like a bouquet of flowers. Um, don't know why. Maybe I'm probably wrong. You're probably right, but obviously, if it's Bouquet or Bouquets, in, 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 in the, the, that's it. That's how Mexican people pronounce it, and that's obviously the best way of pronouncing it. But I can't help pronounce it Bouquet. But he had a really good game, and I think for an 18 year old, he stepped in and. Um, Molina's not getting back into the team I don't, I don't know whether he's going to come back in with his injury or whatever but um, that's why we're crying out for Molina not to play because we've got youngsters in the in the Cantoria that um, I think I pronounced that right um, that can come in he's one of them <clears throat> Sergio Perez as well uh, um, he's quite good Olivas as well got injured um it sucks because it looked painful. It looked quite bad. It looked really upset, to be honest with you. I mean, I haven't seen a, a footballer cry for quite a while. So you're thinking, oh, crap, that, that looks bad. So hopefully it's not a too long term. Hopefully it was just the pain rather than him thinking, oh, my God, I'm out for the next few months. Um, yeah, but Bouquet, Bouquet um, he's going to have a top seat. He's going to have a top career, um, which is good. The, Me the Mexican under twenties at the moment is superb. Um, I can't wait for the next few games that they're gonna have. Hopefully they're televised. Hopefully we can stream them. That'd be great. Um, all in all, bit of a boring game. Um, yeah, one hundred percent a game Chivas should have won. Uh, with the worst America side in 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 years. Um. They looked terrified as well. They looked so nervous. They they absolutely did not want to concede a goal, um, which tells you everything about how far they've fallen. Um, but it's typical Chivas that we're not going to capitalize on you know on a golden opportunity to kind of you know cement our superiority over them. We can't even do that. Um, Messias will come good, Alvarado will come good, Vega will be still one of our best players, probably the best player until he moves on. I still don't know whether he's actually renewed his contract or not. I don't think he has, but correct me if I'm wrong. Um, so he could still leave. Um, you know, Porto has been rumoured, uh, PSV uh, has been rumoured. We'll have to wait and see. Um, I think hopefully if there's if there's if there's any meaning to the whole PS3 Chivas connection, friendship, whatever alliance or whatever, then he could he should go to PS3 and I think he would do really well at PS3. I'd rather him at PS3 than Porto anyway. Um, <clears throat> I think they'll come good. Um, the midfield set Beltran I think had a really good game. Um, so good to see him finally cement his place in the first team. Don't know why all, the, all these coaches were just like, no, we're not going to play you, no. Play Molina instead. Like, mate, Beltran is 
literally showing you what you what mistake that was. So I think midfield was good. Um, Bukate and um, and Beltran, I think, are are going to be our midfield for a while, providing they're not poached by the Regios. Um, and it's just our defense. I think now. I think we need to get a good goalkeeper in. I would like to see us going for um, um, a decent goalkeeper. To be honest with me, Acevedo. I don't know if there's no if there's no European clubs in for Acevedo, which they Lincoln should be. Uh, you know, Chivas puts in a decent offer. I don't see him going. Nah, I don't want to go to Chivas. I think he'll be like, yeah, hell yeah, let's go. Um. Acevedo at Chelsea, uh, uh, Chelsea, uh, not Chelsea in the main. Um, Acevedo at Chivas would be phenomenal. Would be like a huge move, as as big a move as we've ever made, in my opinion. Um, <coughs> and um, revamp the revamp the defense in the summer has to be. Uh, we need we need better defenders. Bresenio's a good defender, but he's not reliable. M- Mia, I think he's he's his age is telling now. No disrespect to him, he's one of our best defenders um, of late, but we need defence needs to top up, in my opinion. As for Leandro, um, I mean, uh, he made he made subs that I was actually quite happy with. Um, took defensive defensive players out for attacking players. You could tell that he wanted us to score a goal and win the game. I think he did all he could, to be honest with you. Um, Vega just wasn't up for it today. Alvarado and Macias were a bit here and miss. Angulo tried. He had a really good shot. They a really good chance that a shot went wide, unfortunately, in the first half. Um, just wasn't meant to be. The players, I think, have shouldered the responsibility in this game. Um, but yeah, that's that's just my opinion. Let me know in the comments what you thought. <coughs> um, do you think that any other game is now the bigger te- bigger game? I still think the America Chivas game is always going to be, always going to be Mexico's biggest game. In Liga of Mexico's biggest game, biggest game, should I say? Um, of course it is. Like it's it's legendary. It's just this was just arguably the worst in a long, in living memory. Um, unfortunately, um, Chivas should have won this game. Like it feels like a loss for a Chivas point of view. Um, and I see American fans like lamenting because they're like, "Oh no, we're celebrating! We're celebrating a draw against Chivas." Um, that's how far America fallen, and it's not going to take America long to get back up. To be honest with you, they've got decent players. They just got a decent. Hopefully, they just got a decent coaching now. So that um, I think I like Solari. I just think he can adapt to Mexican football. Because Liga MX is different to Europe, bro. And if you don't know that, if you can't adapt to it, then you're, you're going to get sacked. Um, so anyway, let me know in the comments what you thought of the game, who you thought were the best players, who you thought were the worst players. How long do you think America's going to take to get back to the top? Who do you think is going to win the league this year? Do you think it's going to be popular? That'd be weird. Uh, 2022 is start getting off to a weird start, I tell you. Uh, but yeah, give us a like as well. Give us a subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. Um, I'm here as often as I can. My dog's saying hello as well. Um, so yeah, take it easy, guys, and I'll see you guys next time. Adios.